Welcome to our next project. We're gonna turn this backyard into an outdoor oasis. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jen Woodhouse and this is my husband, Adam. And we are so excited to share a project that's close to our hearts. This one is special. We had the opportunity to transform this space for some dear friends of ours who are pillars of the community from pastors, school teachers, to school administrators. They opened their home to everyone and we got a chance to up this space for them. They already had a fire pit area where they love to host gatherings and they've really created a true haven for their friends, family, and neighbors. So we set out to elevate the space into something a little more functional and beautiful. Something that reflects the warmth that they bring to everyone who walks through their door. So in this video, we're gonna take the space to the next level and we'll show you how we did it. This is a great space. They spend a lot of time out here. We're just gonna upgrade it a little bit, zhuzh it up. Clear this area, grade it, build a paver patio, a round one. We're gonna have three swings around the fire pit right here with a pergola overhead. The first thing we did was call 811 so the local utility companies could come out and mark where any cables or utility lines were running underground. This ensures that we don't run into any issues as we're digging the holes for the pergola post. I got this one, I got this one. We're clearing that out and then we're gonna grade the area so that we could start laying a patio paver. We rented a skid steer from Home Depot to get that done. I'd never driven a skid steer before, so it wasn't terrifying oh or, or anything. I mean, for me, for them, <laughs> maybe a little bit. I'm scared. After we graded the yard with a skid steer, we laid down paper base, spread it out with a garden rake, and then used the plate compactor to get a good solid surface that we could start with. Home Depot's tool rental program let us get all the stuff done in one day with tools that we didn't have, but we really needed. Fantastic. We won't go into a ton of detail with how we prepped the yard and laid the paper patio because there are already a lot of videos out there on how to do such a thing. But I will say that we bought this ready-made circle patio kit from the Home Depot and it made things so much easier. The pavers are all designed to fit together and form a circle, so there's no cutting involved. You just follow the pattern and lay the pavers according to the design and it took a lot of the guesswork out of the process. I just saw that we didn't have to make any cuts, so I was sold. And by we, she means me. I didn't have to make <laughs> yeah. any cuts. Yeah. Once that was done, we laid the pavers out in the pattern we wanted. We followed the circle patio kit and it was great. Then we just restacked the fire pit on top of the pavers, giving us a little more depth because we wanted the fire pit to reach all the way to the ground and we wanted it to be the right height. Once we had the patio pavers laid, we dug the holes for the pergola post. We had to get those to 24 inches. In this area, 18 inches gets you below the frost line, but we wanted to add a little bit of extra. Then we braced it up using some scrap wood and made sure everything was plumb. Shout out to 84 Lumber for providing the lumber for this project. We use smooth cedar, and let me tell you, I absolutely loved working with cedar. It's durable and naturally resistant to exterior elements like rain, UV light, decay, and insects. And it's also so much lighter than pressure treated wood, which makes it easier to work with. It's easy to cut on my saw, easy to carry. Yeah, I am a huge fan. Team cedar all the way. And pro tip, you can order any species of wood from 84 Lumber. The store is open to everyone, not just builders and general contractors. And they also offer expert support to help you source and select the materials to set you up for success. So with the post in the hole, we mixed two 60 pound bags of concrete per hole and dropped it in, let it cure for about 48 hours. And then that was that. And we waited. So with the post, Sorry. So the next step was level the tops of the post. We used a string level to get the tops of the post all to the same height and then used a circular saw, but the circular saw depth wasn't quite enough to get all the way through. So we finished it off with a recip saw. All right, so here's where things get interesting. I had a really hard time figuring out how to attach the beams to the posts in such a way that it would be strong and safe and still look good. The wonky angles were a real challenge. Because we're placing square stock along a curved surface, creating strong load-bearing joints was my top priority. We also worked closely with Simpson Strong to High Structural Engineers to ensure that we were building safe. And while they sadly don't make a connector for this specific application, because it is super niche, I knew I could use my favorite Outdoor Accents hardware because they're structural and they look great. 
When I drew up the plan in SketchUp, the angles at the top came to about 30 degrees, so at least I had a jumping off point. Then, on the job site, we cut a prototype to ensure that the angles were right. Right? No, I mean like correct, correct angles. That makes sense. Then we made the real cuts, dry fit the beams, and made adjustments as needed. It was quite a process. Like I said, lots of trial and error. Also, there are other variables to consider. For example, these six by sixes aren't perfectly six inches. One post might be six inches, and the next was five and three quarters. So there are some discrepancies to account for, and you can't really plan for that. You just kind of have to roll with it. I'd say that because of the angles and the custom cuts we have to make, this is an intermediate level project. So if you want to tackle something like this, be prepared to do the work until it works. I like it. I like that. We should put that on a t-shirt. Do it. Mm -hmm. T-shirts, hats, everything. So for the end post, we wanted to notch them so that the beams set on top of the post for as much strength as we could get. To do that, we took a two by six and templated where it would lay, marked it, cut it with a circular saw, and then used a chisel to get out the pieces. This part was especially nerve wracking because we had just one chance to get it right. These were the only posts we had and they were set in concrete. So if we mess this up, we've got issues, so. Not to mention we were doing all of the work about eight feet up. No pressure. I think that was the hardest part for me to wrap my brain around. Understanding how the beams attach to the posts and it be low bearing, strong and safe. I tend to overthink things. And I tend to jump right in. <laughs> he jumps right in. If it were up to me, this thing would never get built. And if it were up to him, it would fall apart. So I think we make a great team. Fall apart's a little harsh. A little <laughs> harsh. Not, on, not inaccurate, but a little harsh. For the joints in the middle, we beveled the beams so they'd sit flush to the posts and use the Outdoor Accents hardware to attach everything, which brings us to the sponsor of this video. Huge thanks to Simpson Strong Tie for partnering with us on this project. If you've watched any of my other videos, then you know that I'm a huge fan of Strong Tie and their Outdoor Accents hardware line. They make building outdoor structures like this one easy, safe, and beautiful. These black powder-coated fasteners not only look great, but they're structural too. The hex head washer gives you the look of a bolted connection, but installation is super easy. You just drive it in like a screw, and you don't have to pre-drill, which saves a ton of time. We added blocking to the inner posts so that we had something more to drill into. We needed that because when we beveled the ends of the beams, um, we just didn't have enough with six by sixes. I think if we were doing this project again, I would I'd opt for eight by eights. But in any case, we made it work. We worked it till it worked. I like it. Now the beams are up and the joints are strong and it's time to add the rafters. I used a jigsaw to cut a Roosevelt step rafter tail. How's that for an actual term? Then clamp them together and cut notches for the beams. Now. Let's have a satisfying ASMR moment and just listen to these wood crunches. This is her favorite part of every single project where we have to notch something. She is always trying to grab the chisel so she can be the one to experience that. <laughs> We added blocking between the beams to hang the swings from. We used four four inch strong drive SDWS timber screws for each block. The strong drive SDWS timber screws are really awesome because they're structural load bearing for wood to wood connections and they're coated for exterior applications. They come in black or tan. They have a large head so no washers are required and the low profile head sits flush or countersinks nicely into the wood, which I love. It's a high strength alternative to traditional lag bolts and there's no pre-drilling. Finally, we hung the swings and gave it a test run. Moment of truth. This transformation was about more than just updating a space. It was about giving back to the people who give so much of themselves, and now they have an even more beautiful spot to continue their heart's mission of welcoming and serving others. And thank you again to Simpson Strong Tie. We know it's all built to last, and we could not have done it without them. 
All the products we use will be linked in the description and for more information, visit strongtie.com. We hope this project inspires you to create something special in your own backyard. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It really helps support my work. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jen Woodhouse, this is Adam, and we will see you in the next video.